Hello and welcome to another edition of Coach's Corner. Wanted to let parents know this time of year during the holiday season, as well as the various coaching conferences that go on throughout the country in early to mid-January, we took the time to pre-record a few episodes so that we would be able to maintain our consistency with regard to our schedule. Several of our next few episodes are going to be pre-recorded, therefore we will not be able to take live questions. I've gone ahead and, and kind of put some questions together for these coaches that I thought would be pertinent to you as a student athlete, as a family. Happy holidays, and we look forward to getting back into our live presentations during the middle of January. When you've got 14 and 15 year old kids having Tommy John surgery, that, that's an issue. So you, you gotta take a break. Welcome to another edition of The Coach's Corner. Uh, we do this every Thursday evening uh, at 9 p.m. Eastern. And what our goal is, is to provide access to college coaches from across the country at all levels and divisions uh, in order to help parents and student athletes have a, you know, an awareness, but more importantly, an understanding as to what it is like at the college baseball level. And my guest today a former major leaguer with the Los Angeles Dodgers, St. Louis Cardinals, Tracy Woodson, who is the head baseball coach at the University of Richmond. Uh, good morning, uh, Tracy. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Walter, for having me. Uh, you're very, very welcome. And I want to talk about this is year 10 uh, as the uh, Spiders leader at the University of Richmond. And I know, you know, the, the field, the amenity, uh, a lot of things have changed over the years. But, you know, now that you're kind of in your groove and you're, you're kind of getting the program uh, rocking and rolling. Uh, what types of student athletes are attractive to you as not only a coach, but as a student for University of Richmond? Well, well, it's, it's a high academic institution um, for sure. Um, and, you know, we're, we're looking for the best students. Um, and, and, you know, if I see a kid and um, I really like him, that's the first thing I have to check. I have to see, you know, what, what, what kind of a student is he? I'll go to the coaches and you know, find out, uh, you know, whether it's the high school coach or the travel coach or whatever. But, you know, we need to look at the transcripts and, um, you know, test scores. And if, if they're not good enough, I have to walk away. Um, you know, and I, you know, I think we're just like I'm good friends with a lot of the coaches in the Ivy. And, you know, we all have the same we all have the same issues. And, you know, we talk and, um, you know, it's just we, we have to have, uh, you know, academic kids here. And if you're not, you just it's, it's just hard to get them in. Well, I think it's important for parents to hear this, especially as the eighth and ninth graders, as they begin to get into that that discipline and routine of academics as well as the athletics. That transcript starts the first day your freshman year in high school. So you have to really be aware of not only the classes that you're taking, but you have to be diligent as a student as much as you are trying to be as an athlete. And so talking about that, Give us an idea of, you know, what type of test scores or transcripts generally are favorable for you as a head coach to take those through and into the admissions department. Well, you, you hit it on the head. You know, you once that once that grade goes into the ninth grade, you can't get it off. Uh, so it's important that, that they start in the ninth grade. Um, you know, those, those scores are and grades are just as important, you know, as their junior and senior year. Um, you know, if they do struggle, you're looking for you're looking for an uptick. You know, as you go, um, that the grades get better, and and you know maybe the, the school will will look at that. But um, you know, I, I the, the the average ACT scores are thirty two or thirty three here, um, and you know we're AP courses are very important. Um, you know, the kids that can take those AP courses and be successful, you know, are usually the ones that can be successful here at Richmond. So you you mentioned you talking to the Ivy League schools. I assume that the Patriot League and the NESCAT at the Division Three level are kind of in that same ballpark. Is that something that you stress when you have your camps at University of Richmond to not only the student athletes, but more importantly, the parents, you know, that this is really who we are as a university. And it, it should be coveted by parents trading athletic ability for academic excellence. But is that something you kind of discuss with parents during your camps? Uh, that you hold throughout the year? Yeah. So, you know, in my camps, I can actually tell the parents uh, more things that I can actually say on this uh, interview but, <laughs> yeah. you know, because of the NCAA rules. So, you know, I, I stress to them it, that it's, it is important. There, there's a lot of things that the parents, they, they, they don't know and they don't understand and, and behind the scenes. And, 
um, you know, I think for all the, you know, for all the parents, it's, you know, the, the coaches, we're, we're looking for certain things as well. Um, you know, when we recruit, uh, you know, guys may be looking for a catch or a shortstop or, you know, and well, my kid's got these grades. Well, you know, I, I might not need a catcher. Um, I think it's very important for parents to go on to websites and look at rosters. You know, if your son's a catcher, go on and see how many kids, that, how many catchers they've got on a roster at the schools you like. Um, you know, it, it's it, that, that's just the, I mean, that's just the, a, a big deal for us, um, you know, for the parents to understand what type of school we are. Uh, it, it's, it's very frustrating also when you've got a coach or a travel coach that'll send us an email and say, my kid's a great fit. You know, he's a 2.3 GPA. And, you know, I, that's, that's not right. He's not a fit for us. Um, so I think it's important for the parents to, to understand that Richmond, um, you know, we have a number of schools, Davidson, GW, um, that are high academic schools in our conference. You know, you hit on the Patriot, the NASDAQ, the, uh, the Ivy, you know, we're all, we're all the same. If you, if you're not a high academic kid, you're, you're probably wasting your time. Uh, and my right, exactly. And I think you kind of t- discussed the topic with regard to not all travel ball, because I know you know that there's a lot of really good travel organizations, but those ones that are trying to kind of send out email blasts thinking that a student athlete's athletic ability is going to kind of get them right to the forefront of a, of a school like Richmond, you know, they're kind of doing a disservice to not only the parents, but more importantly, the student athlete. And so, you know, you, the schools that you just alluded to in your conference, I always find that a lot of parents and student athletes together, you know, they're always into this power five talk. But I know having spent two years in Richmond while Tyler was playing double A baseball there. First of all, it's a beautiful community. Your campus is spectacular um, and your conference is very competitive. Can you speak a little bit about the Atlantic 10 and some of the teams that are in that? in that conference and truly how competitive it is to be, uh, you know, a student athlete in the A-10. Yeah, you, you, you were right. And, you know, for parents, they need to realize you're, you're trying to find a fit for your son. Power five is great. I played at NC state long time ago. It's, it's the recruiting part. It's different now. Um, you know, you're, you're, you're trying to find a fit academically, you know, athletically, um, you know, do you want to live in a, in downtown, whatever city it is, do you want to live in the suburbs? You know, you, you got to how far do you want to be away from your kid? You know, how far do you want to send your kid away? How far does your son want to go? Um, does he want to be 10 hours away? You know, so we, you know, we go through all that. But, um, you know, the 810, is, it's a great conference. Um, you know, you're, you're in the South. You got Davidson. You got us. You got, you know, VCU has been a powerhouse. St. Louis, Dayton has been strong the last few years. GW, George Mason, St. Joe's. Um, and then, you know, Rhode Island, Fordham, you, you go way up into the Northeast as well. So there's a lot of travel uh, in this conference. You get to see, you know, the East Coast and some of the Midwest. And, um, you know, for us, we, we, we like where we're at, um, you know, in Richmond. You, you hit it on the head. It's, you know, we're two hours from the beach. We're two hours from the mountains. You know, we're 90 miles from Washington, D.C. So, um, you know, we're right in the middle of everything. Well, I, I, again, I spent a lot of time on the Richmond campus. Um, both as a coach during travel ball days and then as a dad, you know, watching Tyler uh, and during his minor league season. And I can specifically tell you, you know, Charlottesville and the Richmond campus, they're very similar in the sense that it's a community uh, that is very engaged in their college athletics, uh, beautiful suburban type city. And as Coach Woodson just alluded to, you can be at the beach, you can be at the mountains, or you can be in a major metropolitan city and essentially under two hours or less. Uh, One of the things I want to talk to you about, Tracy, that I find intriguing is during your camps, do you, you know, have other coaches from other programs that might be division two or division three participate as instructors or what, what are, what are the Richmond camps like for student athletes? Well, Colin Raddick runs our camps and I think we have the best camps in the country. Um, You know, we, we fill every camp, um, you know, he does such a great job and it's, it's, you know, it, it is a, it's a well-run oiled machine. You know, my first year, uh, when Colin took over, I, I, I kind of followed him around because I, you know, I want to make sure that the parents are, are getting, you know, what they, what they're looking for. You know, we have our, we have players there that, you know, they can talk to them. Hey, what's it like, you know, in, in, in the fall going through classes and baseball and, you know, weightlifting or whatever it may be. So our players are accessible. 
um, during the time when, you know, we're in a quiet period or, or whatever, we'll have D2 and D3 coaches. Um, and, and they're all, they're all high academic schools. Um, we do a North to South camp um, and for three days, um, beginning of August. Um, you know, we have a boatload of people. And then we'll have 30 to 35 schools uh, at, at those d- division one. And most of them are all high academic schools. And, you know, it, it's schools that we recruit against. But, you know, we're, we're tra- th- this is a big it, it, this is a big for me. It's a big decision that parents and, and I joke about it, it's the second biggest decision you'll make, you know, other than, you know, who you're going to marry. And I, and I joke to the kids about that uh, because it is, you know, with the transfer portal, you know, and kids transferring left and right nowadays. You know, it is a big decision to make. And, you know, you're trying to make the decisions for the right reason. And I always give an example. Uh, my daughter is a senior this year. She is committed to play basketball at Purdue Fort Wayne. Um, it's 10 hours away. It is a mid-major in the horizon, which is a very good women's basketball league. And, you know, people said, well, why don't you wait for This is a fit for my daughter. It's a new coach. We love the coach. Um, we love the staff. She's going to get taken care of. Um, you know, she had other offers at, at some really good schools, but we felt this was the best fit for her. Um, and so, you know, we're, and we're going through with my son's a sophomore, he's a baseball player. And, you know, I don't like being, I, it's, it's so hard being on the other side of the recruiting mm-hmm. part, you know, and I, and I tell parents that it's, you know, this, it, this is a tough decision and, you know, we have to make decisions on what players we want. And now we're sitting here trying to make a decision on what's be- the best fit for my kids. And, um, you know, we, you try to make it an easier process for the parents. Well, you know, I think this is tremendous perspective. Uh, to digress quickly, just so parents and student athletes that, you know, you, you find yourself watching tonight. I want to let you know. So as Coach Whitson just discussed, he, he went to NC State. And then he ended up becoming a big leaguer. We're going to get to that as far as the process. But, you know, as an athlete and you're choosing your university, you know, and you have your parents in the background, it is the second biggest decision you'll make in your life. And so it's not something you want to rush to do as a eighth or ninth or 10th grader, as silly as that sounds. Uh, This is something that needs to take time and you need to really put all the pieces together. How does the coaching part work? The academic part, the athletic part, uh, you know, the, the logistical part, you know, and so all of these play a role when you're making a decision uh, with regard to college. And so, Tracy, on that that standpoint, when you're interacting with a parent, you have a unique perspective then. You kind of put yourself in their role. Uh, and what is it that you tell them about Richmond and what you're going to provide for their student-athlete? Well, we you know, we recruit all over the country. So, you know, their, their kids are going to get taken care of. They're going to get a great education. Uh, if they come in and, you know, I think this is for any coach would say there's nothing guaranteed. There is nothing guaranteed. You have to come in and earn a spot. It is hard for a freshman to play college baseball, whatever level it is. Um, the players are really good. And with COVID and, you know, the amount of kids that are coming back for the act, you know, for the fifth or sixth year, it's hard for an 18 year old kid to step in and play right away against 23 and 24 year olds. Um, and, you know, I, I tell, you know, my guys that, you know, the, the jump from high school to college is the biggest jump. It's not, going from college to pro ball, because most of the time you're a 21, 22 year old kid getting drafted, you're going to a rookie league or a low A and you got 18 and 19 year old, you know, Latin kids and high school draft picks. And they're all younger than you. You're, you're the oldest there usually. Um, so th- this is the toughest part because you are coming in as a young kid with, with basically, you know, grown men and, you know, playing a game that, you know, our guys, you know, we had big, strong kids here at Richmond and I can imagine, you know, when we go play the power five schools, those kids are even bigger than us. Um, you know, not not all of them, but but for the most part, uh, you know, that's that's and that's the different levels. And I think parents need to you need to go watch these games as well. I'll ask parents, hey, you know, how many guys have seen a power five game? How many guys have seen a mid major? How many have seen a division three game? You can watch that and kind of sit there and take a, you know, a back seat and watch the game and say, you know, where, where does my kid fit? You know, or get somebody that you trust that's outside of your family and say, you know, watch my son and then watch this and, you know, help me to be honest. And when I'm making a decision, you know, can my kid play there? Yeah. I think that's really important to get that outside evaluation. You know, I'm not, you know, it's somebody that is not your high school coach, maybe not your travel ball coach, 
somebody that has a background within the game, whether they were a former high school, excuse me, college player, professional player, major league scout, et cetera, get that independent evaluation. You know, one of the things that I do want to ask you about is, and you just touched on it with regard to that, that biggest jump is high school to college. Do you foresee college baseball staying in this say 20 to 23 window as far as age is concerned due to the transfer portal both from the juco level and the lateral transfers yeah i don't i don't think we're going to see much change from that i know the ncaa is trying to get back to normality with the the, the roster size and i think that's the biggest deal right now is you know the number of, of kids you can have uh, because of what happened with covid so um you know we're we're limited because of title nine and uh, you know, a roster size for the university. But, um, you know, I think the, the power fives can can stretch it a little bit and have more, you know, roster um, spots available. But um, I think they're going to get back to, to normal, I would say, in a year or two and get back to where we were before COVID. So how do you deal with student athletes and projectability? I get a lot of questions specifically pertaining to pitchers. <clears throat> you know, their son is a strike thrower. He's in the mid to high 80s. Uh, he hasn't hit his growth spurt yet. Uh, you know, those late bloomers, do they ultimately, can they find their way to a university like Richmond? If, if, if they're good enough, they're going to find a spot. It's like, it's like pro baseball. You know, you'll have kids that are, they live out in the, the country and people say, oh, they'll never, find, if the scouts are going to find them, you know, and I think that's the same for, for college coaches. You know, if they're out there, they're going to get found, um, you know, if they show up at different events, they're going to be seen. And, um, you know, coaches are going to go where the players are, you know, wherever that may be. And, um, you know, people talk, you know, we're, we're good. For, like I said, we're, we have a number of really, really good friends at the D3 level. And, you know, if we have kids at our camp or at, at an event we see, you know, we think well, they might be a tweener for a division one. We'll say, hey, you know, so and so, you need to go. You may want to see this kid. I think he's gonna be a great D three player. And um, it's the same way with basketball. You know, when I'm watching, you know, my daughter's friends or whatever, I try to, you know. And, and I think for the parents, it's, you know, that I, I joke and people sometimes get mad. You know, you take off the mom and dad goggles. You watch everybody on the field. You know, when when my son's playing, I, I watch the other team, and I and I you know I I tell him, did you watch this and what he did? And you know, you're trying to make them better. Well, you're not going to make them better by just sitting there and watching them and not watching everybody that's on the field. And then you can also start comparing them, you know, to the other kids on the field. These other kids might be better. And then, you know, well, how can I get as good as they are? And that's by watching and learning the game. You know, I think some kids that know the game are so far ahead of other kids because they know what's going to happen in certain situations. And, um, you know, I, I, you know, I try to teach my kid everything I can. And I think he watches me, watches my players. And he tries to learn as much as he can that way also. Well, I know uh, when I was coaching at the D3 level, both my boys were watching practices, obviously watching games. And I would always point out, as you just alluded to, you know, did you see the shortstop? Did you see the feet? Did you see the route that they took to the ground ball? And I think that that's, you know, a lot of parents will say, well, I'm, I'm not a college baseball coach. Well, you don't have to be a college baseball coach. You have to take the initiative to go watch games at a higher level that could be a high school in your area but it could be a college you know in all college baseball for the most part is going to be similar in quality for a certain amount of players you know pitching is a different dynamic that's usually a separator but a lot of student athletes can can teach younger children you know how to be engaged how to compete how to carry yourself body language poise composure so I'm curious, uh, your son being a sophomore, um, do you kind of work with him for getting prepared to be a college player or just to become the best that he's capable of being? Uh, that's that's a, that's a tough one because, you know, my wife was a college basketball coach. Um, <laughs> it's, hard to, it's, it's hard to coach your kids, but yes. my son's really good. I'll, I'll give him that. Um, my my wife and I could not coach my daughter. She would not want it. And I think it's a little bit different, which is great. Um, but, you know, my son will listen to, to most everything I say. And I'm trying to make him the best player he can be. Uh, you know, I, you know, I, I, I want him to play college baseball. You know, I want him to play pro baseball. So how am I going to help 
to make him do that. And, you know, I do have an advantage in, in with, you know, my facilities and with my background, but other parents can do the same thing. You know, you can't, you can't overdo it um, and, and, and burn them out. Um, I think that's a big deal with baseball is burning them out. But, you know, as long as he's ready to go to the field and he wants to go to the cages and he wants to go to a game, I can make that happen. So um, at least I'm giving him those tools, hopefully to make, to make him better. Um, you know, you, it, this game has, has changed. Um, my, you know, all my, all my assistants are younger guys and, you know, they're in some of them into the analytics a little bit more than I am. Some of them are, uh, you know, the weight room a little bit more than I was my, my, you know, when I came up, it was a different game, um, you know, and, and strength and power is a little bit more now. So, um, you know, my son's jumped to five eleven. He needs to get stronger. You know, he's almost 150 pounds. Um, but he's got, he's got everything you need. It just needs, he needs, you know, he needs some more weight and he's, he does that three or four times a week. And, uh, you know, I let him do that. And, um, you know, I'm just, I'm waiting to see the final product. And I think that's what parents are looking for. Yeah. And how, what are your, what are your thoughts on the, uh, the 12 month, you know, model of baseball that it's become with, you know, you have tournaments and showcases that go as late as into November. Then you start up in Martin Luther King birthday, they go out to Arizona, the, do you think it's too much for the high school kids? Would you prefer that they kind of train more and, and, and play games less? Or what are your thoughts on that model of 12 months a year for, for high school athletes? So we, we talk about it in here as a staff and um, you know, we talk about, you know, kids and a fresh arm, you know, we talk about, boy, this kid's a fresh arm and people go, what do you mean? Well, he doesn't pitch 12 months a year. I think, you know, we shut our guys down for six to eight weeks at different times uh, I think that's important for pitchers. You, you can't pitch. Eventually, that's going to break down. And, you know, I, when you've got 14 and 15-year-old kids having Tommy John surgery, that, that's an issue. Um, so you you got to take a, a break. Uh, I'm all for guys that are hitters and position guys to play as much as you can. Play as many games as you can. Um, now, you, you need the practices. I don't, I don't like the teams that are Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. They're playing games. And there's no practices Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You're loading it back up Thursday again. You know, you need practices. That's how you learn the game. You know, you, you, I watch some games and, you know, we've had kids before both, both places I've coached and they don't know how to run a bun play. They don't know how to run a first and third cutoffs and relays. They, they have no idea where to go. So I, I think at times you got to, you got to learn the game in that way, but playing and getting at bats is going to help position players so much, so much more. Now at Richmond, do you have like a classroom environment with regard to baseball, whether it's pre-practice, post-practice? Do you have a classroom environment that you have the student athletes participate in, game awareness, things of that nature? Yeah, we'll go over everything. We'll watch. We'll watch videos. The new, you know, we'll watch the video from the NCA, um, you know, for new rules for the year, and then we can go over things at different times. Um, our pitchers will meet uh, in a classroom, um, and they'll go over, you know, once a week. So. Um, I, I think that's a big deal as well. Um, I'm not a big meeting guy, like after the game, you know, I want to, I want to harp on for two or three minutes, what was good and what was bad and then let them go. They need to clear their head and be ready for the next day. And, you know, I'm watching some of these coaches that meet for 30 and 45 minutes after a game, the, the kids, the, most of them are, you're, you're exhausted and it's going in one ear and out the other. Um, so we're, I'm trying to give as much information to my players uh, whoever, you know, the kids that I know um, that they're going to listen to and be able to take and use. Okay. So here's a big question because I get asked this a lot. Uh, you know, I, I'll email you on occasion when, I, when a student athlete says, Hey, I'm interested in the university of Richmond. Give me, give the parents an idea. Okay. There's, this is the foundation. You need to be kind of here as a student and then you kind of need to be here as an athlete. And how are they going to contact you? Do you want to be contacted via email? Are you a social media fan watching videos on social media? How are parents and student athletes going to capture the attention of you and Richmond University? Well, I think, I think it's for, for most, most coaches. Um, I don't know how much, how in depth I'm, I'm supposed to get in on this question. Um, but we, you know, we, we look at, we look at all the emails. Um, I'm not a, I'm not a huge social media guy, um, but we get so many of them, you know, you're looking for a video, no, no more than three minutes long. If it's more than three minutes, most coaches are going to delete them uh, because they're getting so many of those. Um, but you got to, you know, you, you got to contact the coor uh, recruiting coordinators. You know, I think that's a big thing. Um, 
but once again, you got to make sure that, you know, the, 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 uh, the transcript has to be attached, you know, for, for academic schools, they've got to see that. Um, but you got, you got to send them to schools where you can actually, um, probably play at that school. You know, don't, don't just send them out to a hundred schools. You know, we, we tell, we tell kids just, you know, parents pick five to 10 schools that you're interested in. go visit the schools, you know, go to see a D one school, go see a D three school, go, you know, go to a private school, go to a public school, look at the campus, um, you know, go five to, to seven hours away or whatever. And there's so many schools and areas that you can visit and kind of get a feel. Um, and then, you know, go in and meet the coaches. If that, if that's the, if it's, if it's a time where they're in and it's a time where they can actually talk to you, um, you know, with our rules now, you know, you have to, it's September one of your junior year, you know, we can't contact back and, and, uh, you know, it's hard when you're getting emails from freshmen and you can't respond to them and the parents don't know that. And so that's, you know, I think that's other things that the parents need to learn as well. Do you foresee a, a change coming with regard to uh, the rule as when a student athlete can commit at the division one level for baseball, kind of similar to softball, you know, they can't do it until that fall of their junior year. Do you see that, that type of rule pro, uh, passing? Uh, there's so many, there's so many things that are being talked about now. And, um, you know, I think it's, it's, it's driven by the power of five schools and then it works down, it works its way down to us. And, um, you know, I, I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, you know, I, it's hard for me to watch eighth and ninth graders commit to schools. Um, I, I, you know, that's, uh, you know, that's where I, I, have, I have an issue because, you know, this is their life. They're going to they're going to miss three or four years of recruiting and actually right. find a school that may fit better, um, you know, because if they don't get any better. They're not going to that school. Right. They're not. And, you know, they're going to start the recruiting process over and have less than a year to make that decision because they've sat on it for three or four years because some of these kids aren't going to the schools they commit to. Now, are you active on social media? Just for point of reference for parents and student athletes, are you? I, are you I look at that. I, I'm not. I'm not huge on it, but uh, I do. I, I I do go on um, and and look at stuff, and I get a bunch. You know, I get a bunch that are uh, hooked onto my you know my accounts, and uh, you know I will I'll, I'll look at them, but you know I don't usually get bum, bombarded with it, so. Well, I want to say thank you, Tracy, because I know uh, this time of year is busy, both as a parent and obviously as a coach. So I want to say thank you for joining us uh, and you know sharing a great deal of information, uh, not only about University of Richmond, but about uh, college baseball, professional baseball, and so forth. Uh, I look forward to uh, visiting the campus this spring as uh, I have a young man that's, that's going to be taking a visit there um, during uh, April vacation up here in the Northeast. So I'm going to be joining the family. Um, I have some friends down there from double a that when Tyler was down there. So I'm just jumping on board to go see those people. Um, but have a great holiday. Uh, I, I know you're not going down to Nashville, but I will look forward to seeing you in the spring, uh, at one of the spider, uh, home, home weekends. Awesome. Well, we look forward to having you down here. Thank you very much, Chase. And for parents, I'm going to put all the information down in the description of the video, coach Woodson's contact information, email, and if you feel that you're a student athlete or you are a student athlete and feel that you fit the profile to become a spider uh, at the University of Richmond, you know, all that information will be down below. Thank you for joining us. And next week, we'll be talking to the head coach at you know, Ole Miss, Mike Bianco, College World Series uh, champion last, last summer. Join us each and every Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern for Coach's Corner. Thank you for watching.